Uh, somebody asked me how the paint was holding up. I'm gonna stick a picture up on the screen right here. And this picture that you're looking at now was a couple of days before I mowed it. Of course, when I mowed it, I cut all the paint, cut all the color off. But up until then, it was looking like a champion, it looked great. So that might end up being my go-to from now on instead of overseeding the Bermuda with rye, because you know how that works out sometimes. Uh, I'm going to probably just be a painting guy during the fall of the year and paint the Bermuda once it goes dormant be done with it. I know our athletic field maintenance has really, really uh, got a good grip on this concept. And we painted several ball fields this year and we've got uh, quite a few more already scheduled to do next year. So I'm pretty excited about it. But the reason we're here is soil testing. This is a how-to video on how to take a soil test, how to do that. So I'm gonna come out here and, and do the te uh, take my samples out here on the Bermuda, and then we'll go to the house and finish up the video where it's a little quieter and I ain't got these cars running up down the road. And I like to pull a four inch plug when I'm soil testing. You can see I just take me a little piece of tape right there, wrap it around the probe four inches high, and then that way uh, I get a good consistent pull every time. Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. I hope you're having a great day today. And man, I walked right out of the stinking shop and left my, uh, my other uh, probe to pull soil samples been one of those days okay i thought i might have had one over here in my shed at the house but i don't uh I do have my compaction tester let's see what this is doing out here getting there Ooh, that's a good spot so we're getting there slowly but surely. Sorry, that son of us killing me. So why should you soil test? Uh, let, let's, let, let me explain it to you like this. Let's say you have a car. And let's just say you have a Mustang. And you love horsepower. You love for your car to run good. You love for it to perform well. When you kick it, you want it to go. It takes several things by way of fluids to make that happen. And let's call uh, the nutrients and everything that's going on in the ground, we'll, we'll kind of compare that to the fluids that go in a car. So let's start with the motor and the transmission. Okay, so you got transmission fluid. I don't know, we'll call that uh, phosphorus. Uh, you got oil, we'll call that potassium. You, you got antifreeze that goes in the car, and I'm sure some other fluids and stuff, and we can kind of you know, lump all that together with the rest of the nutrients in the ground. And then you got your gas tank, right? And we'll compare that to all of the nutrients. NPK, calcium, iron, sulfur, the whole nine yards. We'll, we'll say all of those kind of represent the gas tank. So in order for that car to perform really well, you can't be low in transmission fluid, right? Transmission will slip. You can't, definitely can't be low in engine oil, right? 
If the antifreeze is low or the water is low in the, in the radiator, it's going to overheat. So all those things, you want to maintain them at a certain level so the engine performs right or performs the way you want it to. Yeah, when you get in it and kick it and burn some rubber and all that, the gas obviously is going to go down, so you have to replenish that. You have to go to the gas station and put gas in it. Every time you get in the car and you drive it around, the gas goes down, you have to go put more gas in, right? Well, growing turf is pretty similar to that, okay? You want certain levels in the ground to kind of maintain there. You definitely don't want things way high and you definitely don't want things way low. And the way I look at the gas tank in this situation is that's kind of like my lawn care program, okay? We're making inputs through the year and as the grass grows and uses up those inputs and you know different things happen in the yard, you need to come back and put more, just like you have to put more in your gas tank. But at the same time, you want to kind of keep a good constant level of all these nutrients across the board. So I'm not a rocket scientist, I'm not an agronomist, I'm not a soil scientist, I'm none of those guys. I'm a dude that graduated high school when I was 71 and I had to take pre-algebra in the junior year and my senior year because I wasn't smart enough at that point in time to pass any of the other classes. It was pre-algebra as a senior. So everything I've learned about soil testing and all that uh, is 100% self-taught from talking with other people, from trial and error, from uh, you know coming out here and actually taking the soil test, sending it off, getting it back, doing my own thing, adjusting it my own ways, and then send another soil test back, kind of get results from that. And I've just been doing it that way for almost 20 years now. And so the way I show you and teach you about soil testing is my way. It ain't based off some uh, guy that has a brain the size of Texas that knows the ins and outs about dirt uh, to no end. Uh, it's, it's simply my take on it. And I'm sure some of you that kind of really get wrapped up in this and really get fine detailed you may or may not agree with me but i mean that's fine i don't mind if you do that i simply want to give you my take on it so hopefully the car analogy kind of helps you understand a little bit that yeah you want to maintain certain levels in the ground and uh, ph is really important and then you also you have to put inputs in like the gas tank when you know when the fertilizer runs out you need to put more fertilizer on Nitrogen obviously is going to be the main one out of all the elements because it gets used up quicker and goes away faster. So like I said, this is a how-to video. When I get my results back from soil testing, uh, I'll go through my soil test with you and then we'll show in another video how if I'm off somewhere or another, I make an adjustment. Like I said, I left my big probe at the shop, but I got a little one right here. There's two, there's two ways that I would do a soil test, okay? This is the my soil little test. I consider this more of the DIY version. It's simple, it's compact. Uh, it's, it's, they, they analyze the dirt a little bit differently than a traditional lab. And then the traditional way is using like a lab. It's spectrumanalytic.com. And the supplies are free. Now they don't do a free probe. You have to, if you want the bigger probe, I think that's a, uh, uh, I think that's an AMS model, uh, AM, AMC or AMS or something like that. But uh, that's if you want the bigger probe. For most DIY guys, I mean, this little one is completely good enough. There's a kit on the Academy website where you can get the, the soil test itself and the probe, and then you keep the probe, don't throw this away, you keep this part, and then when you want a soil test again, you just get the kit. So it's real convenient the way they have all that set up. If you choose to do it the Spectrum Analytic way, you'll go on their website, and I think it's under supplies. This The supplies and all, I'm pretty sure they're free. Double check that, but I'm pretty sure they're free. But you'll want to get you one of these little bags like this. 
and then you'll want to get the form that you uh, need to fill out that goes with the test. So you'll take your samples and you will fill them up to this line right here. You know, the bag kind of, the bag kind of opens up like that in a, in a rectangle and you'll want to fill it up to right here. And then you put your name, your address and all that on here. And then uh, the form here is pretty easy. It's all, you know, just basic information, name, address, uh, phone number, sample ID. I'm gonna send a Bermuda sample in. I'm gonna send a Kentucky bluegrass sample in. And I'm gonna send a fescue sample in. And uh, so I would do shop for Bermuda. I would do uh, ball field for the bluegrass and maybe yard for my fescue. That way I'd know which one's which. And then over here, it's got a recommendation code, and you come down here to the bottom, and you can see 305 is Kentucky Bluegrass, so I would put 305 in the recommendation code beside where I've got ball field. Tall fescue's 314, so I would put 314 beside where I have uh, my yard. And Bermuda grass is 351, so I would put 351, and then beside it, put shop. Here are the different packages, test packages, T1, T2, T3. That's basically the level of depth they go into on the soil test. I, for my company, typically do T2s, and you know that's plenty good enough. Uh, for my yard, this particular time, I'm gonna do a T3. Um, I don't know what the cost of these are off the top of my head, but it's on their website. Uh, T2 is a gracious plenty for anybody. I mean, you, there's so much information in the T2 that uh, that's really all you need. I'm gonna do a T3 this time just because I want to. So once I get all the samples taken, you know, I'll need uh, three different bags like this. Uh, one for Bermuda, one for the blue, one for the fescue. And then I would, you know, Close them up like so, and then uh, stick them in a box, put them in a the mail, ship them off to, to them, and they're really fast about getting them back. Front yard, backyard. Okay, I personally do, like my fescue has a true backyard, a true side yard, and a true front yard. I do the whole thing. I go around and take 20 or 30 samples, roughly, scattered out throughout the entire yard, put them all in a bucket, mix them up, pull out any of the uh, uh, like organic matter, thatch or anything like that. And so I've just got soil in there and then mix it up really, really, really good and then scoop it out and fill up my little bag. Now my soil's a little different. You're gonna put it in this liquid right here. And, but I'd still take multiple samples from the entire yard, mix them up real good and take a small portion and put it in here. I think this cup is like a measuring cup. That's about how much they want in there. But I'm trying to get a snapshot or a picture of the entire yard, not just the corner. So you don't go out and take two or three little plugs and then put them in here because that's going to give you information about that one little area. So make sure you're scattered out in the yard and do that. Now, I have a, like I said, I have a true backyard, true front yard, true uh side yard the growing conditions are about the same but what i'm getting at is the only time i would ever say do one soil test for the front and one soil test for the back is if they are in such different growing conditions uh, i would want to know uh, what's going on in the ground for the backyard and what's going on in the ground for the front yard uh, let's say you got two different grass types. If you got one grass type in the back and one grass type in the front, definitely want two different soil tests. In a nutshell, the front yard, backyard, you know, two different soil tests, it has to be a pretty drastic change in uh, the conditions the turf is growing in for me to want to do that. Or let's just say for example's sake that it's all the same growing condition, but your backyard struggles like crazy and the front yard does super good or the front yard does super good and the backyard struggles like crazy. I would want to know 
uh, more in depth about that backyard, what's going on back there under the ground. Uh, so I would probably do two different soil tests. So, I mean, why even do a daggone soil test? Well, I don't know of any human being that can stick his finger in the dirt and come up and lick it and tell you what's going on inside the dirt. On a car, you have a dipstick, transmission dipstick, an oil dipstick. That's how you get to check the levels in your car. Well, a soil test is the dipstick, okay? It's the dipstick for the ground. So I've always soil test a couple times a year. Uh, two of the, t the two times I particularly like the soil test is early in the season before I go down with my uh, first heavy fertilizer and then uh, kind of late in the season, right before I get into fall of the year. General rule of thumb, if you've already applied fertilizer, give it about 30 or 40 days or so before you do a soil test. We kind of want to know what's in the ground without any added input from you, from a fertilizer you might apply. It. So how anal am I about a soil test? Well, I'm not super anal about it, okay? Uh, what I am anal about is how my grass looks. And when I look at it, it looks pretty dang good to me. But I do like to keep an eye on my soil test, and the absolute main reason for that is the pH, okay? I want to make sure I'm hovering right around that neutral pH, and you just can't know that unless you do a soil test. Let's just say, for instance, I'm severely high in uh, phosphorus, or even a little bit high in phosphorus. I want to know that so that I take the phosphorus out of my lawn care program. So if I think of something else uh, about this that I know, uh, we'll throw it in the next video when we get all the results. Let's go out here and take some samples from the bluegrass. So it's the same way with this one. You see I got it marked with some tape, so I know I'm going about that four inch depth. I'm just gonna go right down there, give it a little twist. And, and there we go. Now with the Spectrum Analytic, they will mail you a copy, I believe, and email you a copy of the results. Now with the My Soil, this is pretty cool. It actually comes with an envelope for you to mail it. It's all prepaid. So with the My Soil kit, you go on their website and you register and uh, it's got a little card in here, your registration kit number you want to Put this number in right here. Now I've got that mixed up pretty good right there. So I've got me one level scoop. You don't want to dump this liquid out, okay? Whatever you do, don't do that. Open her up. Put your ground inside. Make sure that lid's on nice and tight. You'll have a card in here with your registration number on it and that matches the number on the container right here that you send back to them. So when you go on their website and you register, that's how these two link up together. And put it in my little baggie here that's, like I said, already prepaid when you buy the soil test kit it actually pays for the shipping uh, back to them and you fill out your information right there like you would any normal package and send it off and once you do that you'll have like a little account set up with them and when it's ready they'll notify you and you can go on their uh, website or inside their app and see your results and then for the Spectrum Analytic, I got my ground in here. I'm gonna take and fold that up, fold that over one more time, lock down the little tabs on it. That one's ready to go. Obviously, I have to fill out my information right here. And then I'm gonna go do a, another one for my fescue here in just a second, and do another one for the fescue with the my soil. And then I've got my Bermuda samples at the shop, so I'll be sending off 
six samples, uh, three to spectrum analytic for the three different turf types, and three to my soil for the three different turf types. And once I get them back, we'll see where I'm at. We'll make another video. As always, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch. I'll check you later.